Hello. We recently installed a new wind generator to replace an older one that was kind of tired and worn out and not producing much power anymore. So we wanted to build a custom fabricated box to hold the wiring splice and also mount the generator to. Hi, I invite you to join me on Whitney Design Labs. We're going to do all kinds of interesting projects, including robotics, electric vehicles, renewable energy systems, mobility experiments, electronics, programming, photogrammetry, microcontrollers, 3D printing. 3D printing. We're going to be doing some computer-aided design, prototyping, and 3D printing. Maybe some aviation, we're going to make some cool stuff, and anything else that comes along. And don't forget, most of our stuff's going to come from the scrapyard. We're going to spend almost nothing. It's not going to break the bank. We might fix some things as well. We're going to recycle things, upcycle things, and repurpose some things. We're going to do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Please join me on Whitney Design Labs. So recently I've been using the Unreal Game Engine and learning a lot about how to do 3D modeling and animation, uh, especially for cinematic rendering. So I thought I might just model the box that we had in mind for the wind generator and do it in 3D. Here's the actual box that we fabricated, and it serves two main purposes. One, the main mount with the big bolts up there you can see on the top that hold the generator, but also gives us a place to put the wiring on the inside and a door that closes and keeps the wiring dry. It gives us a splice point. The generator that we used as the replacement is a 1000 watt model, 24 volts. This is the box down at the ground level on a pole where the three phase wires come in and go into the converter box which is then converted into 24 volts and run into the house uh, underground and that ties into the solar system and the batteries and the inverter. Here's the 8 foot ground rod that keeps things safe. This is how we attached our uh, hoist point and I'll explain more about that a little bit later. This is the gin pole. This gives you a lot of leverage when you're raising up a mast. You can see some solar panels in the background. That's Teddy and Kurt. Again, you see Teddy on the right, Kurt on the left. Teddy starting to winch it up. This is day one. And there's Pippi the dog, of course. And so things were going um, okay on day one. We noticed there was a little bit of different tension in the mid guy wire and the top guy wire, and the mast was flexing a little bit. We were slowing down, a little bit concerned, wanted to look things over, and right about that moment, well, yeah, it came crashing down. So we had to do a repair. So yesterday we had a failure right at this joint, and our answer was to sleeve it and weld it. And we're about to try to uh, stand it up again. So this is the mechanism that's going to be out of the field of view when we actually do the raising. But we've got a a winch on here. It's attached to a piece of a um, tow hitch setup, and then that is strapped to the concrete pillar. So this is our ground anchor for the hoist, and it goes up to the top of our gin pole. So we're about to raise it up. So things were going much better on day two. Uh, we were taking our time. We also spent a bit of uh, effort to adjust the tension between the mid guy wire and the top guy wire. And here I've sped up the film so that you can just kind of just see it going up. You can see the airplanes in the sky going across rather quickly. Um, that's all I did is speed up the film, but it went up uh, quite smoothly. And we have the generator head. All three wires of the three phase were tied together, meaning it was electrically braked. And you can still see a little bit of movement, but as soon as we disconnected the three-phase wire and hooked it up to the uh, charge controller down on the bottom of the pole, uh, all of a sudden it started spinning rather quickly and we were generating power almost immediately. Uh, I'm going to insert just a little bit of the wind noise from the camera's microphone here so you can get a sense of the, the wind of the day. Uh, we did have an anemometer, but we didn't take a reading, but it was fairly breezy and uh, it was fairly rewarding because we started producing power instantaneously. So success on day two. Thanks for coming out. Bunny screwing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scruff and all. Scruff and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have shaved probably. This is Dan Rather on CBS Evening News.